Good everyone. Um, obviously, a difficult loss on, on, on Saturday um, to lose like that and, and uh, became worse. And you guys know it became worse and more expensive on the loss because um, we did lose Daniel Green for the season. Um, and he had surgery this morning. Um, and it's been a tough day, a tough couple days around here for uh, myself, uh, for a lot of the six-year guys, a lot of the linebackers, because he's been the heart and soul for those guys and for our football team. And Daniel and I have been through an awful lot since the first day I got here. And I, I've i never seen a, a, a young man grow into such a man and what a leader that Daniel Green is and has been and will still be for our players um, the rest of this year. But he'll do it in a different different light as more of a student coach. And so uh, I'm just I'm gut wrenched by losing him, um, and not because of just the football part of it, but just having that kid around every day at practice and being really the uh, the lifeblood of the of the defense. And now some other guys have to step up. Um, you know, Treshawn Ward got banged up. You guys saw that. I, I think he's doubtful. Um, we'll learn more later in the week, but I would say he's doubtful. Uh, Will Howard, uh, I would say, would be questionable. He didn't practice yesterday. Um, I think he's limited today. Uh, we just got to figure that one out as 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 the week goes on. Probably won't know on that one till later in the week. Um, but all, all that being said, uh, as the message was to the guys on on Monday. Um, we can't let Missouri beat us twice. We, we have to come up with great game plans, no matter who's playing at quarterback, running back, Mike linebacker, and um, uh, the show moves on. And we've got to continue to, to battle the adversity that we're facing. And uh, everybody else is battling a lot of stuff too. So uh, it's our job as coaches to get in, get the guys in great positions to, to be successful on Saturday against a, a really talented Central Florida team that, from what I understand, may be down a, a player or two as well. Um, probably start Avery, but we'd have Rubes ready to go too. I mean, we'd give guy both guys a lot of reps, and like we did yesterday, we split a lot of those reps yesterday. Um, Colin and I really haven't dove into that uh, on on Tuesday. Um, today will be the same thing. In my guess is that Avery um, will take uh, most of the reps of the ones, but Jake will take some as well, and we'll see how the week goes. Yeah. That's a good question. I'd have to see him do some things. And yesterday, there's no way he could have done anything. And you're right, he's a very, very tough kid and, and gutted it out, probably similar to what Brady Cook did in gutting it out, too, for Mizzou. Um, those two kids, neither one of them could run at the end of the game, um, but threw the ball well. So um, we'll have to figure that out as the week goes on. I'd love to get him between 20 and 30 snaps. I think he might like to think he can get 30 to 40 snaps, um, but anywhere between that 20 and 35 snaps would be would be terrific. He had a normal practice yesterday. Granted, we weren't in pads. Today he'll be in pads, and he was in pads last week, so it's not like this is, uh, Coach, what are you going to do? You're going to play this kid that hasn't been in pads. He's, he was in pads last week as well and did some – uh, some run run game, did some pass game stuff. Um, obviously, you know conditioning is is a little bit of a concern, but uh, Coach True's been working with him uh, an awful lot, uh, and so we got to see how that that conditioning can translate to to practice and on the field. But uh, he will be available. How much would his return? How much could his return potentially mean to you? Oh, I think it'll mean a bunch. As far as not that not that guys aren't aren't playing. Um, as well, but you got a guy that's a what is a 48 game starter that, um, you know, the communication it gets uh, up the notch because Duff's been through everything and seen everything and uh, uh, comfort level, um, you know, and to get those five guys back, you know, and we're still gonna. When he does come back, we're still going to play Carver Willis. We're still going to play TP, um, some of the guys that have been playing. But it'll just give us, um, you know, maybe that opportunity to keep Cooper where we want to keep him at guard. And so if we can keep him where we have him at guard and hopefully Duff and Carver can take those reps at tackle, I think it makes us a better front with, with Cooper at guard. Just to clarify on Daniel, he's in a six-year. Is that beyond the scope of the 
I, you know what, Fitz, I haven't even uh, asked about that, um, probably because it's so fresh and so new, and I, and I don't even want to have the conversation w with him if it could come up. Um, it'll be something that I'm going to investigate. Um, after you went back and watched the film of the Missouri game, yeah. what were some of the things you about? Missed opportunities more than anything uh, offensively. Um, a couple of, of opportunities to, to make some plays, and, and we don't we don't on third and fourth, first and ten on the last drive. We have a chance. Um, we have the ball around midfield, up twenty four to twenty twice, um, where we have a chance to go up by two scores and and give them credit. We didn't make the plays they did, uh, and then just the the glaring uh, weakness of of just not playing well in the secondary. Uh, I would say probably Le James White and um, Shippers would be uh, Anthony for sure, um, and uh, it was yesterday. But Le James will come over there because he's a traveler anyway. Shippers is a traveler that knows the offense. Uh, I, I think those four guys. Yeah, that's a, a, a big task for a, for a true freshman, and he doesn't play and doesn't act like a true freshman. Uh, I grabbed him after practice. He belongs. He he's a, he's a really good football player. I think we've seen that in the first few weeks. Um, now um, you know he's got to be a catalyst in there. And Bo Palmer will play a lot too. Between those two, you know we've always protected Daniel uh, through fall camp. So those two guys got most of the reps uh, throughout fall camp, even when Daniel was was banged up a little bit. So from a practice standpoint, uh, those two um, have done a nice job. Now they got to do it in a game situation. Uh, Bo's done it a little bit in the past. Austin's done a little bit this year. Um, it probably puts uh, more added uh, communication pressure on on uh, Austin Moore and Des Purnell. And those two guys are ready for that. And um, we're going to try to take a lot of heat off of the Mike linebacker from the communication standpoint because Austin Moore can do it and, and wants that on his plate. And you want that out of a fifth-year guy. Um, miscommunication, um, poor technique, um, poor eye discipline. How would you classify Jake Clifton's uh, recovery? And yeah, I don't think he's going to be ready this week. Uh, hasn't done anything for us yet other than stuff in the training room. Um, you know, we can hold out hope, but I, I, I think he's probably the bye week away. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've had this, I've dealt with this stuff all the way back to Carson Wentz when he missed his senior year, um, and Skyler, and so and Adrian, and so on and so forth. And it's where it's really tough is when they're captains. And, and every one of those situations, those guys were captains, and um, they have to stay involved. And, you know, you want them to, but I've never had one of them say, I don't want to be involved and step away either, because these are their guys. And, you know, Daniel Green's going to make sure Austin Romaine and Bo Palmer are ready to go, and he's going to make sure that that defense is um, understood, understands that that we have to up the level of the standard because um, we weren't as we weren't as good as we needed to be, but uh, on Saturday, but give Mizzou a lot of credit. And with the UCF Henshaw Malzahn offense, do you see kind of a duplicate around the Big Twelve? No, no, not no. Um, you could a little bit of, of of Texas Tech, but um, it's a different if a different deal. Um, they want to run the football. Um, it's just going to be lightning fast. We're going to play a lot of plays, um, and we've got to be able to get off the field when we have the opportunity to get off the field. And we've got to do a great job in the red zone uh, on defense. Uh, because they're going to move the football, and uh, we have to be able to make the op when you have an opportunity to make a play, a tipped ball, uh, balls on the ground, uh, a tackle in the open field, uh, a sack opportunity. You can't let them off the hook because if you miss them, um, you're you're probably going to pay for it at the end of the drive. And um, that and the amount of gadget and trick plays, and they're not. I mean, they're good. They're gadget and trick plays, but they're good because they mess with your eyes. And and we have to do a great job of, of showing these things an awful lot. And I know they'll come up with different ones, but uh, that's the big challenge is staying disciplined enough. And then offensively, 
being able to control the clock and control the ball and try to do the best we can to keep their offense on on the sideline. I mean, that's the uh, that's the number one goal against high tempo offenses is have have your own offense hang on to the football for 35 minutes. I mean, that's that's what you hope for. Um, even though you know you still got to get points out of those as well. Um, it's a peck. Um, you know, I, I, not really. It's just a, it's just a culmination of time with him and spending the amount of time I have with him in my office, visiting about life, about football, about, um, everything else. And, and, uh, he, you know, he was one of those guys that was never, af- never afraid to come up and, and just sit down and talk. And, um, but he's like that with every coach. And that's the neat thing about it. Doesn't matter if it's offense or defensive guys. It was a tough day on Sunday when, when he came up and, and we all knew and kind of went around from different office to office, uh, the amount of respect that, uh, all of our coaches, support staff and stuff have for, for Deuce because, uh, uh, he's been with us the whole time here. Mm-hmm. Well, we wanted to give him uh, a handful of, of snaps, um, and they just happened to be calls where it was a, a designed read of a run pass, um, and we even screwed up a couple of those plays uh, that I know frustrated Coach Klein because we didn't get something. You know, we had an error, uh, uh, alignment assignment error, um, and that happened on offense as well as defense that we've got to get cleaned up. But he made plays when even when things broke down, and um, you know uh, we've got to get him ready to go. But the one thing that I'm excited is if he gets that opportunity, it's it's not just some gimmick run plays. He's going to spin the ball around, and he's gonna he's gonna be a pure quarterback, and um, uh, he he would need to be that for us. And then UCF is another team that has has some guys up front defensively. Yep. Well, we've been challenged for sure uh, up front. That there's no doubt about that, and we're going to be challenged again uh, this week. And so we've we've got to find ways creatively to run the football um, without maybe doing too much with with trying to uh, simplify some things um, as much for our offensive line as much for our quarterbacks uh, and for our running backs, um, so that. Uh, we can eliminate some of the some of the errors that we're having in the run game, and some of those are are, are maybe misiding something, and some of that is just we've got to finish better. And it's not just O linemen; it's tight ends, it's fullbacks, it's it's wide receivers of blocking. Um, you know, we maybe don't target the right guy, and that guy makes a play, or we we have it targeted right, and we fall off a block, and that happened a few times as well. Yeah, we, we spent a, a little bit of time um, on Houston and, and UCF because those are the two that we were we were going to play uh, a little bit in the summer, um, a couple days on on each each team. Get some you know um, just some early observations on them, uh, and knowing when we played the two teams, obviously this one being early. Uh, we have a number of, of our cut-ups are from this year, but they've had two non-competitive games. Um, so it's hard to, to get a great evaluation on, on a t- couple of their wins because they were they were blowouts really early. And Boise's really the only only game that you can see some things, and there's some things that maybe aren't what we do offensively and defensively. So we have to go back a little bit more into last year's film. Uh, we know there's a coordinator change uh, on the defensive side, so... Um, just trying to do some research there. And we've done the same thing on Houston, but that one's down the line a little bit. And what are your impressions on the, their quarterback that they're going to put on? Um, you know, uh, I know he's played a lot of football um, and uh, played at uh, South Florida and then transferred, and, and I thought he played a really good game uh, against Villanova. Um, you know, the I know how good the Plumlee kid is that, that they had that was injured and – uh, I hope he's okay because that that play looked really ugly on film. And um, there's another tough tough son of a gun because he gutted it out 
uh, and played the last two plays uh, on one leg. And that's that's inspiring when you watch that, when you watch Will Howard, when you watch Daniel Green, the guys that aren't going to let their team down. And, and you can tell he's that type of guy. He's not, he wasn't going to let his team down. He was going to finish that game. And um, so just a little bit of observation on, on the, the guy that uh, – is going to play in this game. Um, he's going. He's playing for Gus Malzahn, so he's going to know what he's doing. I mean, it, Gus is a great teacher of the game and teacher of his offense, and he's going to put him in positions to be successful. And there's that's the way we have to look at it. I don't care if he's experienced, inexperienced. Um, you're playing for Gus. You're pretty dang good. Yeah, yeah. No, not really. Um, I, I think both from uh, the mental side of it came in wanting to be a sponge and learn as much as they could from the older guy. And whether it was Skyler or for uh, Avery Will, um, they just took it all in and, and uh, didn't try to do more than they were asked to do, just tried to do what was going to help the team win. Um, both have really good skill sets. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that I, th I think as a freshman, Avery's faster than what Will was as a true freshman. Um, I think Will would probably admit to that. Um, but no, I, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of similarities to it. And, uh, you know, one thing I, I knew about Will Howard back then and I know about Avery now is the stage isn't going to be too big. Uh, but in the same respect, as collectively as a football team, we can't put it all on their shoulder. It's got to be uh, what we do on defense, what we do on special teams, you know, the offensive support staff that's got to make it easier for him to operate. And you talked last week about defensively trying to make the other team one-dimensional, yeah. putting a lot of stuff in the run, but given the problems in the secondary, are there some adjustments you're going to have to make? To Absolutely. <laughs> no, I am not going to elaborate. No, uh, I think everybody was down on Sunday for a lot of reasons um, and, and banged up, probably like Missouri was banged up. But, you know, as we talked about on Saturday, I mean, this is life in the Big 12. I mean, we're going to have – so many one score, one possession, uh, one critical drive games that you got to find ways to win those games, and and um, uh, you know you, you you have to learn from it, but you got to flush it too. You know, you, you, there's this is a long season, and there's a lot of things still in front of us. Um, but you got to flush whatever has happened to you. It, you have to continue to learn from it, as well as you. Ha we have to continue to, t to develop guys, a la what we're doing with the running back position, what we're doing uh, with the linebacker position. You know, when, when you lose um, Daniel Green, it affects some special teams because a lot of guys that were maybe starters on special teams are maybe pulled off of that because they're going to play a lot of snaps. And now some other guys have the opportunity to step up. So it's a trickle down, but everybody has to just own their job and own their role. And, and we have a standard here. And, and I think our leaders did a phenomenal job yesterday after practice. I just, I, I broke it down and said, leaders, you got the offense, you got the defense. Um, you make sure that we, we live up to the standard uh, this entire week so we can put our best foot forward on Saturday. Well, that was last year's team, but um, there's no question you want to draw off some of those experiences. Um, and we have a number of guys that can, but um, you, you can't. You got to realize it wasn't last year. It, it, it is this year, and it's a new team, and, and uh, we have some new challenges on, on both sides of the ball that we have to continue to shore up. I think we all see we have some really good strengths on this team, both sides of the ball and in the kicking game. But we have to emphasize those, but we've got to – fix and address our weaknesses. Um, what, what do you see from the UCF defense? Uh, physical, uh, very long athletic guys. Um, they've been a lot more man coverage. Um, they have the ability to play zone, but they're, they're big, 
good players at corners uh, that that can lock you down. Um, they get off blocks up front. You know, it's it's a it's a small sample size from this year's film because of the two lopsided wins that they had. Uh, they, I mean, they dominated those games, so that you play a lot of backups. But uh, um, I, I think they're I think they play really well to what their um, what their offense does. They don't give up and and pride themselves on not giving up explosive plays, um, and they harass the quarterback. Yeah, that was just the plan against Missouri. And I think everybody saw the game that he played against Simo. He he can do everything and, and we we will do everything with him. Coach, you've obviously seen uh multi layered routes, uh combo combo routes before. Do you just go back and hammer those details and that fundamentals in yep. the secondary of how to do things right? Yeah, it's still you gotta train your eyes to make sure that you know what you're seeing. And it's probably the same picture we showed you on film in the scouting report. Um, and you, you can't get lazy with your technique. And if you had to go all the way back to USF to find some McLean yep. setups? Yep. Um, yeah, some of our guys have done that. You bet. Yeah, but I don't know how much the uh, – I, I hear you, Fitz. I mean, we're going to go play at Oklahoma State, which isn't as bad of a trip at night. Um, but what time is UCF going to get home? When, when, when this one's a 7 o'clock Central and it's 8 o'clock, and I don't even know what they have next week, but it's going to be really, really late. Um, but I think we're a little bit at the mercy of the networks, aren't we, as far as when they're when they're choosing those games and, and um, you know – we don't have any this year with the road games that we do have. Uh, I know we're going to have some night games, but the travel shouldn't be um, uh, terrible. But moving forward, I don't know how they are going to have to address it because it's going to happen across the country. It's not just the Big 12. Anything else? All right, thanks. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a good week.